So we have a video here that uh, a young man at the University of Southern California, I guess, is filing Title IX complaints because of female scholarships and, you know, female only this and female only that. And it's discriminatory, according to Title IX. NBC Left Field has done a little bit of a story on this one. And uh, let's walk through it and see if you can find any bias at all. In the last year, the Department of Education has opened several investigations into American universities after complaints that those universities are systematically discriminating against male students. Welcome to the party. Since 1979, women have outnumbered men in college. Today, it is approximately three to two. How about that? The argument is essentially that by funding women's only scholarships and programs, universities are discriminating against men. When did you start feeling that you, as a man, were being discriminated against at USC? I guess like it's really incomprehensible to me that like with men being the minority that all these like female on the scholarships are still like going on in those like colleges. Three of the government's ongoing investigations were triggered by complaints from this one man. And actually if you come to think of it, affirmative action for women is much more comprehensive than affirmative action on the basis of race. There's absolutely no question about that. There, there, there can be no doubt. Its main arguments are with one, women's scholarships. Yes. Encouraging women to go into STEM, I think it's, you know, generally a good thing. But there aren't corresponding scholarships for men to get into social work and stuff. And when they tried that in Australia in one of the veterinary programs, <laughs> you, you about imagine the feminists had a shit fit. Women's studies, that's the second item. Women's centers, that's the third item. Psychologists do not have men's centers. And lastly, professional groups like women in business or women in science and engineering. Society of Women Engineers. So he filed a complaint with the Department of Education, arguing that by funding women's scholarships and clubs, the University of Southern California was violating Title IX, a federal provision that prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex. Now, she got it right there. That is the correct definition right there. But you'll see as we progress, she changes her opinion a little bit or maybe reveals her bias. Let's let's get to it. The Department of Education has received complaints like this before against other universities and dismissed them. This time, though, the administration opened an investigation into USC. Well, maybe those other complaints were without merit or without standing or were filed during the Obama administration. Ah, we got a new sheriff in Washington. His name is Donald Trump. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe that has something to do with it. Colleges do not offer similar affirmative action programs for men. No, not white men. Uh, black men, you know, of course. But if you're white and you're male, forget about it. You know, you got nothing. In the disciplines in which they're the minority. So women are the, like, absolute majority in, for example, like social work. It sounds like you're describing a zero-sum game. You think that feminists have advanced the cause of women at the expense of men. Um, I think for the most part, yes. There's only so many seats on the bus. If a woman takes a seat, a man does not get the seat. Do you understand? It is a zero-sum game. Carissa wrote three of the four Title IX complaints that have resulted in these Department of Education investigations. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Very kind of you. And he's helped to draft three more that are still being reviewed. I wanted to meet him because the Department of Education is taking his complaint seriously. Why wouldn't they? Title IX applies to both men and women, in case you don't know. No person in the United States shall on the basis of sex. Not because they're women, not because they're this, not because they're that, on the basis of sex. Men are a sex. And because a single English literature doctoral student has found a way to use Title IX in ways it was never intended to be used. See the bias right there? See it? See the bias right there? It doesn't say specifically for women. It says no one shall be discriminated based on sex. To argue against the legitimacy of women-only programs. I needed some context around these cases, so I went to the National Women's Law Center. The National Women's Law Center, I'm sure full of rabid feminists. Would you... <laughs> what do you imagine? In Washington, D.C., to meet its education expert. It's concerning that the Department of Education is investigating these complaints. What if they have merits, ma'am? What if there's something to it? Oh, that's right. You're a feminist. You cannot believe in any circumstance men can be discriminated against because men are the oppressors, the patriarchy, and all of that other shit. Rather than just dismissing them outright. Maybe those other claims didn't have merit. Maybe these will. Have you even given a thought to that? In uh, states where affirmative action bans have been implemented for race-conscious admissions, we've actually seen enrollment for people of color drop. 
we're really concerned that doing away with gender inclusive programs, you would see the same thing for women across the board. Feminists tell us that Congress, in order to be fair, in order to be equal, we got to have half women in there, right? Got to have uh, half the governors in the country should be women for equality. That's what feminism is all about. The dictionary definition, but not on college campuses, apparently, since women outnumber men 60 to 40. Uh, wouldn't a 10% reduction in the number of female students be more equal? Back in the late 1940s, women were less than 30% of postgraduate students. Now, I don't know where she's getting her statistics here because, of course, there's no link to the statistics, but I found some here. 120 years of American education, a statistical portrait put out by the federal government, the United States Department of Education. In fact, in 1943, 68% of post-bachelor degrees were awarded to women. Roughly 57% of bachelor's degrees went to women. And of course, there was that little conflict going on that time. So men really couldn't go to college. See, without the right to vote, they were shipped off to go and die in Europe and Japan. But let's not, uh, you know, let's not let that get in the way. See, um, so I don't know where she's getting her stats or she's just lying. Title IX was signed into being in 1972 yeah. by President Nixon. Tricky Dicky Nixon. The idea was to mandate equal treatment and protect women from being held back by gender stereotypes. Read Title IX. It says nothing about particularly women. It says on the basis of sex. You should try doing a little research, okay? But by 1981, women were earning more bachelor's degrees than men were. 1979, but uh, hey, who's, who's counting? And they have every year since. Yeah. That's now at every degree level, by the way. Yeah. In 2016, women earned around 53% of PhDs. 53% of doctor degrees went to women. Unfortunately, they're not in anything useful. <laughs> That said, women are still underrepresented in high-growth science and technology fields. It, it, it's the patriarchy. It's the evil, oppressive minority of men on campus that are keeping these women from even enrolling in engineering. Is that what we're going to hear next? Uh, no. Women can go into engineering if they want to. They choose not to, or they choose to do something else with their life, or they take a different... Isn't that what feminism is all about? <laughs> Isn't it? They're just 20% of computer programmers and engineers, and they make less money after graduating college. That's because STEM fields pay the highest. So if they want to get that kind of money, go into computer science. It's your choice, ladies. While affirmative action has helped women overall, not all women have seen the gains from affirmative action. Let me guess. Women's of color. Women of color, particularly black and Latina women, are still underrepresented in college. Absolutely false. The black population of the United States is 12%, roughly. 14% of college students in the United States this year are black. If anything, black people are overrepresented in college, just in case you didn't know. Should we be worried that women are the majority on undergraduate campuses? Does that indicate that men might be struggling um, in some sort of systemic way to access college? See, here's the thing. Her feminist brain, you could see the hamster. You could see the eyes get kind of glazed over. It's like, shit, how am I going to answer this question? Because I'm a feminist. And feminism, everybody knows, you can't discriminate against men. Men are the oppressors. Men are keeping the women's down. So her little brain hamster is spinning around, around, around. What am I going to say? What am I going to say? What am I going to say? How am I going to say something here that kind of sounds like it might sort of relate to the question, but really doesn't answer it? Uh, what did your hamster come up with, ma'am? Um, I think it's a good thing that, you know, campuses are becoming more diverse. Except not diverse with more men. Okay, got it. We're in a global economy and you need to learn from people from different walks of life. Unless they're men. See, we don't need that. Links below. James Maxwell, thank you for listening.